Hello, my name is Mateusz Falczak. I'm from uh, Jagiellonia University in Krakow. And uh, in this short presentation, I'll be uh, covering the topic of uh, eSports, which uh, stands for competitive played video games. There are, of course, more definitions of, um, uh, of eSports in general, but I won't go into that. And uh, I'll be talking uh, in the context of Poland and to some lesser extent, perhaps, uh, uh, <coughs> to uh, Eastern Europe. And uh, my research material is um, mainly based on two events which uh, took place in uh, 2013 and 2014. And that is respectively first of the uh, Intel Xtreme Masters um, um, Season 7 tournament and uh, uh, Intel Xtreme Masters Season 8 uh, Grand Finals. And uh, uh, both of these events took place in uh, Spodek in uh, Katowice. Mm. Uh, I'd like to cover uh, three like, main uh, areas of interest for me, uh, uh, which in my opinion share the biggest impact on the eSport uh, like future in the, um, uh, in the European context at least. Mm. Uh, first, I'd like to present eSport titles as a subject to um, something that was called the um, uh, mediated uh, uh, instrumental play. Uh, I borrowed this term uh, uh, instrumental play from the, uh, one of the few books that cover the topics of uh, uh, esports, uh, namely the T.L. Taylor Rising, Rising the Stakes uh, Esports and the Professionalization of Computer Gaming. And um, in my opinion, the biggest struggle for electronic esports, at least nowadays, uh, lies not in the games itself, because they get constantly patched and uh, altered, may any. Uh, glitches or uh, problems with balance occur, um, but uh, in the techniques used in the transmitting the gamer's uh, on-screen play to the broader audience uh, as seamlessly as possible, uh, preferably, uh, without hindering the spectator's experience. So uh, mm, I will also argue that the, uh, mm, well, the instrumental stands for uh, something which is used in a particular way and I think that uh, in order for a game to be a successful uh, eSport uh, it must be uh, used not only uh, by means of playing but my, by means of uh, also showing it to the audience in order for it to work. So that's why it's uh, kind of instrumental in the both ways, in the gameplay and, and in the, uh, like the, the way that is shown into people. Mm. And uh, I like, uh, yeah, that's, that's one of the uh, uh, shots presenting the, uh, the more uh, like technical section of the, 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 the backstage of an uh, uh, eSport event. Uh, there, are, there are judges, uh, they are very, very rarely uh, shot on a broadcast, but uh, they're here. Uh, anyway, so I'd like uh, also to uh, emphasize the uh, importance of fans in the um, esports context, which are placed in a very peculiar position, like contrary to, uh, for example, traditional sports. Um, and here we can see uh, like dedicated fans, which were not let into the overcrowded spot deck uh, at the grand finals, and, but are nevertheless following the match standing there in the freezing cold. Uh, next, I'll be analyzing the evolution of genres based on uh, uh, fans' interests. And here I present the logos of the, uh, what I think are the most uh, important esports uh, games nowadays. And uh, each game of those I listed above presents different model of uh, consumption, different, so to speak, models of play, and uh, which involves different tastes and game gamers' uh, preferences. For now, on, let's just notice that uh, f uh, Four of these games are team-based strategies, and I count MOBA games as, as, a, as belong to the, this uh, strategical modus of play. And now on to the, to the spectacle itself. So the uh, uh, eSport matches, especially during the big tournaments, big events like uh, Intel Extreme Masters, um, they are characterized by something that I would call double broadcast. And, uh, what I mean is that the f uh, fans which are gathered in the very place of uh, uh, events are one part of the audience and uh, the other part of the audience 
uh, via various uh, internet streams uh, uh, is following the matches sitting on their homes uh, in front of the computer screens. Um, so that's kind of crucial here. And here's the panoramic view of the main stage during uh, Intel Extreme Master Season 7 tournament. And uh, there were two main games playing there, uh, League of Legends and StarCraft II. Uh, uh, here is the main uh, screen kind of uh, moderated by the commentators. And so this, the, uh, this is not the game screen that the players say. The players uh, respectively uh, uh, see on their screens this screen and uh, this screen. So that's kind of like a very visible example that the um, uh, esports are like, like double mediated play. It's not uh, what the players uh, uh, actually do, but uh, uh, how they are shown, it matters the most, I think. Uh, there's, uh, uh, of course, the commentator section and the, uh, uh, the, the so-called experts uh, panel. And uh, they, they are uh, more or less directly borrowed from uh, uh, traditional sports when during the matches uh, we can see, we can uh, hear the uh, commentators, which are here presented on the right. And uh, during the breaks uh, we can uh, hear what the panel of experts has to say. The, the thing that is somehow special, uh, uh, I think, to the Polish uh, uh, eSport events, and uh, I think the bigger Eastern European events as well, uh, is the uh, presence of many additional events, uh, which can be seen here, like Spodek divided into uh, two sections, the main stage on the right, and uh, to the left, the computer company stand, uh, room for cosplayers, and so on, mm, and some uh, low, uh, low profile uh, the tourneys like World of Tanks tourney. You can see the poster here. Um, uh, they are presented here because of the diverse demographic of the spectators and the, of course, commercial potential of such an event. And here's uh, another shot presenting what it looks like. And uh, the other uh, like special feature of the Polish model uh, is the uh, is the difference in the model of financing such an event. Um, uh, in Poland, uh, uh, we have to attract sponsors in order to uh, make it happen uh, in our country. There's basically no other way, but we do it in kind of an uh, offline motion. So uh, invite uh, sponsors, we say to sponsors, okay, so uh, a lot of people will, will come to the event in real life and they will see your uh, uh, your logos and so on, but for example, in America and and works uh, the different. For example, the uh, pro circuit games for major league gaming, they are uh, uh, basically just an uh, online event. So the the sponsors are more interested in uh, uh, in the audience in front of their computers watching uh, watching the streams, which puts kind of like, like lesser lesser pressure uh, to the uh, like the social aspect of things, more to the uh, like community really focused on, uh, on gameplay thing. And uh, I would argue that currently most popular esports games are basically the product of fun invention. And one of the perhaps most telling examples uh, involves uh, Min Guzmang Lee and uh, Jess Cliff. Uh, they, in 1999, made a, a very popular mode for uh, a game called Half-Life, uh, which, uh, of course, is Counter-Strike. And uh, it is still uh, one, uh, of the, uh, one of the esports games that is very long with us, still. And uh, it's the similar case with League of Legends and uh, Dota 2, which trace their origins to a fan-made map for real-time strategy game uh, uh, Warcraft 3. Uh, and uh, even the uh, name of, uh, of this game, of Dota, stands for Defense of the Ancients. That's, uh, thank you. that's, uh, that's uh, what the mode was, was called. And um, one more, uh, one more uh, important uh, issue regarding relation between players, spectators, and content providers in the area of esports is a relatively high uh, level of entry for a newcomer to enjoy an esports basically, uh, uh, an esports spectacle. Basically, the more uh, competitive the game is, and the more uh, its uh, mechanical benefits solely uh, a player skill, the more effort it requires from a spectator to enjoy it on a high-end uh, high levels of play. 
Um, and uh, when we take a look at the uh, main uh, Twitch TV page, which is the biggest provider for a streaming uh, service and uh, video on demand service for uh, esports, uh, we can s see how the how it's uh, well it's it's uh, uh, in practice. So uh, the League of Legends in here in the top left uh, is a, a fairly simple team-based free-to-play game with a mind of relaxed approach to competition and quite a lower mm, level of entry. And uh, uh, StarCraft shown here uh, on the uh, bottom right, which has a, like, well, like, I hope it's visible, like a fewer, a fewer viewer base. I, I took the screenshot during the peak hours, like the 9, 9 p.m. Saturday, something like this. So uh, StarCraft being the extreme uh, high point of entry game, relatively stressful, uh, and quite an uh, 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 expensive title. It's not a free-to-play uh, free game with the more polished and professional mechanics. Not very friendly for new players. And uh, uh, this is the shot from a recent Business of Esports panel held at the Georgetown, Georgetown uh, University School during the Red Bull Battlegrounds, which the uh, experts and uh, esports practitioners argue that in order for esports title to be successful, its gameplay needs to be relatively stress-free for a new player. Because if it fails to do so, then the new esports title is basically evaporates from the market in a short period of time. Uh, therefore, I would argue that it's easier to do, uh, to do it for a new title to launch if it's a team-based game, not a one versus one game. Because you know, in one versus one game, there's a heavily competition. They are quite stressful, and you can cannot blame the other participants of the game for you lose, for example. Uh, and uh, there is also one game that was played during uh, uh, Inter Extreme Masters Katowice Finals, which I deliberately omit, uh, 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 Hearthstone uh, Heroes of Warcraft, because I don't consider it really an eSport, more like a community-based game when you don't have like strict rules. And, uh, but it's uh, maybe a sign of a, a shift in eSport toward the more community approach, not the fierce competition, uh, but uh, like more on a, on a relaxed stance, more community-based stance. Uh, however, there is still one thing that's to keep interest in those uh, elitist uh, uh, games, mainly the national pride. And this is the flag sponsored by Polish StarCraft Online Community Networks. And that is very characteristic for the Polish uh, community. Uh, still the nationality of an uh, athlete uh, plays a significant role. What is more, such notions are present even if there's actually no Polish player competing at the time. And uh, 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 in this photo, uh, uh, taken during StarCraft finals, there were no Polish uh, players, unfortunately, during the very grand final, um, uh, we can see the flag showed, uh, the flag that, that I showed in the previous, previous picture, we can see how, how fans grab it and show it to the public. And it was successful, it grabs the media attention. And also people from the streams, uh, they, uh, they, they also see, see it. And uh, well, it's a Polish national flag, of course. And uh, here's the rest of the members of Fnatic team. Uh, uh, it's a League of Legends team. Uh, they were placed uh, uh, second uh, in, this, in this tournament. You can see the national diversity and it's quite hard for a European team to present uh, a, a purely one nation team and that will achieve success. For example, as compared to the winners, well, Koreans, no surprise here, but uh, uh, also the Americans, which, uh, which were placed third on this, uh, on this very tournament. And uh, jumping into conclusion here, uh, I'd like to stress out some uh, important aspects regarding the revolution of esports in Poland and the Eastern Europe in general. Uh, um, first of all, the community aspect of uh, electronic sports seem to grow stronger despite some titles like StarCraft still having significant impact on uh, esports genre. So still the, there is a still room for a first competition. And uh, uh, second, the development of technology is quite important and quite quite crucial, uh, actually, in the esports genre. Um, uh, the media technology, be it uh, internet television, 
uh, streaming services seem to have different uh, uh, direct impacts on the players' community and future of esports as a whole. And uh, finally, uh, uh, though some titles evoke like unhealthy notions of um, uh, nationality, race, and gender bias, uh, the aforementioned tools, uh, with the addition of building stream chats and uh, tools like uh, forums, for example, moderated community forums, uh, such as the networks, which flag was, was presented previously, uh, seem to enable enforcing good policy regarding this matter, which is additionally supported by the national, agent, cultural diversity of a large number of, uh, 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 from, taken from the uh, uh, esports uh, audience. And that's all. Thank you very much. <laughs>